Hey. hey, we are doing something so exciting today. Epic. We are in Glen Rose and we are helping to uncover some dinosaur tracks right. that are at the Dinosaur Valley State Park. And we are excited that we are able to do this today. Yep, these tracks are recently exposed and they've had a whole crew of people out here and volunteers helping for the last couple of weeks. Despite some heavy rains and other things, they've been working really hard on cleaning these tracks out. You might have seen these tracks attracting national news, and we're out here to document it and uh, help out wherever we can. We're really excited to be here. It's an epic day. Yes, yeah, so come with us. Let's check it out. Let's go. We're here today at the Dinosaur Trackway here at the Dinosaur Valley State Park. And Lionel is doing something really neat here with uh, mapping the trackways. What is it that y'all are doing? Okay, what I'm uh, doing is using photogrammetry to make a 3D model of the trackway. A person would be able to go into a 3D uh, viewing environment with the model and it would be just like they were standing out here wow. in the uh, track that and, is really and looking cool. at it. Uh, what, what I'm do uh, I came here Saturday, uh, last Saturday, and I took a lot of photos from about right over there to uh, way down there where it's starting to get a little rough. Uh, I took one sixth of those photos one section of it uh, yesterday, made a 3D model of it, and uh, actually I was kind of surprised at how good it turned out. Awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll send you a link where you can uh, uh, download the, uh, the video and look at it. We can't wait. Okay, so what I'm doing today is uh, using uh, reflectors. I've set up four reflectors out here. I'm going to use survey grade GPS to uh, survey their location. I have a total station uh, that's really pretty neat because it takes a through the lens image of what the target is. Uh, but I will uh, first register the total station using the reflectors. Then, uh, this is something I've never done before. Uh, usually I'm shooting a wall, you know, a, a, let's say a, uh, a road cut outcrop is what I've done all uh, for the last 15 years. Uh, doing something on the horizontal is going to be a challenge. So what I've got is I have some big nuts uh, that I'm going to place on here and I'm going to try to shoot those with the total station. Take a picture of where the nuts are. Then in my photogrammetry software, I will be able to go in and give them a 3D location, that spot, a 3D location. Wow. Uh, you know, relative to my grid that I've set up with the reflectors and the total station. That's really cool. That's so mind that's, blowing. that's what I'm trying to do. Nice. And the end result would be uh, a 3D model of this trackway all the way down to where it gets kind of rough uh, that anybody could look at with a 3D viewer. Awesome. I'm excited to see that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Okay. We're excited to help you with it. A lot of these infill tracks, you know, way past where the trail oh, yeah. is. Here's a track really nice inside one. of a track. This one's raised, the other one's recessed. That one's uh, pretty neat. 
That is really neat. Wow. Yeah. We're mapping everything. That is so cool. I first came down in 1980 to investigate these alleged human footprints and we're at the famous Taylor site which is like the mecca of the Mantrak claim, Mantrak claims and there were supposedly four human trackways here. Where we're standing now is the famous Taylor Trail and Stanley Taylor made a film here called Footprints in Stone which is what uh, brought these to you know, widespread attention. It wasn't long before I figured out what was going on here because even most mainstream scientists, they were dismissing them. Now oh, they might be erosion marks or carvings or something, but no, these are being made by an animal walking and making an elongated impression. And you know, when you clean them well, you can actually see what's going on. This is the end of the long, deep dinosaur trail that they sometimes call the Lone Ranger Trail. It goes on for over 150 steps and uh, ends by the bank there. It intersects with the supposed human trail and several other trails. But here we have its elongated print but you can see the indications of three toes. And at one time, it, when it was smoother, it's, we've got some algae being built up here. You see the smoother texture? This is an infilling material. It filled into the tracks, and especially in the toes, it hardened there. Right. And if you focus on this, you can see, well, it's kind of shaped somewhat like a human foot. But they always had some indications right. of indentations. And then, yeah. the, then the outline of the infilling material, you can see very plain in some old pictures. But yeah. if, you have to clean the tracks really well to see that. And um, so, Instead of a human track overlapping a dinosaur track, it's really two different types of dinosaur track. This fellow was impressing his sole and heel, the metatars metatarsi, so I called their metatarsal tracks. And it, it may, be a, may have been made by a more slender dinosaur, probably an ornithomimid, because the ratio of the digits to the metatarsis is long is different than an acrokinosaurus, which right. is probably what made these. Yeah. So you have two different types of dinosaurs walking in different manners. And then up ahead, you see some really distinct infill tracks where it's, it's still smooth and it looks like, you know, and they're getting raised, which is another interesting phenomenon because the infilling is iron rich so that when it rusts or oxidizes on top, it becomes harder than the limestone. So as the river scours the tracks, it's eroding around the infilling and making them start becoming raised. There's some really funny marks we found in just in the last couple of days, kind of almost look like pot, pot marks. There's a whole collection of them right in line with this ornithopod. And we don't know if it's uh, like maybe a iguanodon with a thumb spike poking in, but it's just, just we keep right. finding some really interesting things there that um, we're trying to figure out. That's a dinosaur track going that way. That's his toe, that's his toe. Oh, yeah. And that's the heel. And here the infilling has come out somewhat. But here you can plainly see that this is really the heel that the infilling has come out of a dinosaur track going that way. It actually continues along here. And, you know, we got some of the silt staining. It's kind of obscuring the infilling island. But if you come up ahead here, and this is a strange sequence of holes that's in line with these 
are lithopod tracks, which are probably made by, you know, again, a two-legged plant eater. Because look at that outline of the infilling. It's pretty plain Beautiful, here. Beautiful, yeah. See, the toes are shorter, the heels are more well-rounded. Well, well and we had this mapped out for 20-some steps, but now we're seeing more of them. And this pattern of holes is right in the middle of the ornithopod trail. And if, if it's an iguanodon, you know, oh, and it had wow. a thumb spike, That's could it be doing true. this and stabbing something? We're not sure, but it's very interesting. And when you clean them out, they're, all, they're kind of conical. Mm -hmm. So that's one idea. You wouldn't even think there's a track anywhere here. There's no indentation. You know, I mean, but here we have, the algae is not built up. And watch what happens. If you can kind of see even dry the outline of the field filling. It's getting raised because the iron has made the infilling harder than the limestone. So it's being eaten away from around the infilling. But if you moisten it, Look at that. it just jumps out. It's almost like magic. Oh, wow. And you can even see the claw. Yeah. Yeah. At the tips. Okay, so that's and then there's this is a track going that way, so here's gonna have another overlapping. Yeah. I got hooked on this, not just in you know understanding their alleged human footprints, but just the dinosaur tracks in general. I couldn't believe that there wasn't a single geologist or paleontologist in the whole state of Texas doing any serious work on this. Right. But it you know, it left a niche for me, and so I've been mapping these out and for many years. And well I'll say one last thing about these alleged human footprints. Most of them are these infilled metal tarsal tracks, or in some cases, they're mud claps, the toes, the mud's come back over the toes, or they may be road. But whenever the toes are subdued by one factor or another, or you don't clean it well, they kind of look like human tracks, but if you clean them well, you always see the indications of where the toes went yeah. in. And you just have to study them well. In this case, it's pretty obvious where yeah. the toes went in. It is. But it, um, there were some carvings on loose blocks of rock. I think what happened is, the locals, like during the Depression especially, they were looking for ways to make a little extra money. So it'd be difficult to cut out a track from the river. And then these wouldn't be nearly, as, even if they believed they were human, just distinct. So they took blocks of rock and carved very distinct, but not natural looking human tracks. And there's, a, there's several of those at least. And then there were just some erosional features, like in a park, and they would put the water to kind of encourage human shapes and toes. So those are the three main categories, metatarsal dinosaur tracks, outright carvings and some erosional features and irregularities just kind of highlight right. to make them look human. Hey. Hey. All right. Well, holy smokes. It has been a hot day. Hot. And a busy day. Very productive. And very educational. So we hope that you like uh, a lot of the content that we had to bring to you today and you got to join in on the fun that everybody's been having here in the Plexi River. Yeah. In Glen Rose, Texas, finding these uh, newly uncovered dinosaur tracks. So happy that we could help. I would love to come back anytime. Special thanks to Glenn Cuban who asked us to help, was a great host, taught us a lot, did a really great interview. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, hope you enjoyed. And uh, don't forget, if you like our channel or you're new to the channel, take a moment to consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye. Bye.